go. Okay, so let's start the stream. So for CPL, CPL 7 here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 teams. <laughs> and today's match will be between uh, Flying SCVs as well as uh, the Beach Buddies of StarCraft. So we can see all the teams here. I think one of these teams is a European team, right? Uh, maybe the Beach Buddies of StarCraft. I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> okay, I thought you might have some insider info on the Euro teams, but uh, for the maps today we have Fighting Spirit, uh, I think it's Polaris and Polyport. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sounds good. let's get into today's matches. Uh, for the first match we have uh, Masuchi against Exit. So I've already loaded up the replay. We're going to be watching as their first Protoss. So let's get started. This will be a tier zero game uh, from week one. So we're still casting week one right now. In the bottom left, we see the military green Zag Masuchi. OK, and in the top right, you see the uh, I guess Peach Protoss, and this is Exit Nas, and they've chosen a different username, but I'm just gonna try to avoid saying that one, I think. If I okay. can, for the time being. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Exit has Protoss and Terran roles on the Discord server. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he plays certain matchups um, with Terran and other with Protoss. Yeah, so my understanding of Exit, um, traditionally a Terran player, I think Exit's played a lot of Terran, more than Protoss. Um, and I think they just switched to Protoss for this CPL. I think they actually won the Chobo League as Terran. So, uh, they're a pretty good Terran player. Yeah, we and have to we have to look at the game, yes. I'm sorry, but uh, there's, there's a pylon in the middle of the map. Things are happening, no chitter chatter in this game. Yeah, very, uh, I would say, aggressive play here to proxy a pylon. And most likely, I'm going to say two gateways in the middle of the map here. Yeah, it's always two when you proxy it. I've never seen a one gate proxy. Yeah, that would be mainly, uh, I think, a first Terran strat. They do proxy one gate occasionally. Oh, yeah, okay. No, but against Zag, I've never seen it. Yeah, I you think probably right. just lose it too easily because once the Zag builds, circlings then he he can overwhelm one gate <laughs> and you don't want to build cannons with it in the middle of the map yeah so we'll see how this goes there is a spawning pool already down for the zerg player so they are going to be able to get those zerglings out and they it looks like they're opting to take their natural expansion here yeah masuchi is going for the tried and true over pool into 11 hatch build which is very safe, allows him to have circlings pretty fast. So it should be doable to hold this. Of course, it depends a little bit on what he uses his larva on. He doesn't have the scout yet, but he's he started with six circlings, so that's promising. That's good to defend. And X is actually using probes here to kind of supplement the initial Zealots, he's brought two additional probes into the middle of the map and they're gonna start heading over here to uh, the Zerg base now as he has scouted with all of his probes. So now sending uh, the Zealots to the Zerg net and right now the probe has kept the Zerglings in the main so uh, Zerg's not gonna be able to really get out on the map. They're gonna have to deal with these Zealots first. Really good reaction from Masuchi, I'm not sure if he scouted something that I didn't notice, but he continuously built links, no drones, so he seemed to know that something was coming. Mm -hmm. But he's zealous, trading very effectively on this ramp here, taking out, it looks like six uh, links already, and now the Zerg is kind of, okay, they got their second hatch up, so now they have two hatch production of Zerg links. Uh, so we'll see if they're able to overwhelm this zealot force that's coming out of two gateways. There is two zealots on the ramp, which are uh, kind of isolating this exposed natural hatchery. Might be something... Oh yes, the drone drill. 
I was just about to say it might be something where you'd like a drone drill to push mm -hmm. the salads off the ramp a little bit. But there's just not enough circlings yet. Yeah. And that sunk in the natural is quite optimistic. Yeah, maybe a, a little too early of a bust there. I like the play of building that drone, bringing it out there, but uh, now we see the Zealots are trading so effectively, and with their shields, they're they're good at fighting these kind of small engagements against like a, a limited amount of things, I think. But oh, here's no, oh, no. Oh, can you get the hatchery? You can. It's always scary when you commit to folks firing a building. Yes. It takes up damage, and if you don't get it, then it's super, super uh, bad because you don't get anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of a risky play, and it looked like for a second there, Exit would have been able to just overwhelm. Even so, taking out that hatchery was a very big win for the Protoss player. That being Definitely. said, uh, the Zerglings are now out on the map, so they're going to be able to start peeking away at this pylon. And if they're able to unpower these gateways, that could be a, a you know equally big uh, counterplay for the Zerg uh, to knock out all the Protoss production. Yeah, two, two links are going for the counter attack, but there's no cannon up and no salad at home, so you'll have to defend this with probe micros, with protoss. But of course, um, playing against one hatch and just a couple of drones is a great position for protoss. Mm -hmm. Now, the Sunko is maybe a little off position, and there is more zealots coming into the. Uh, Protoss main, but these Zerglings are cheating very effectively with the probes actually right now, and they've delayed a lot of mining time, so with uh, these links being so effective, there is a way back in this game considering there's no cannon in the main as you were mentioning. Yeah, remember before I said you don't want to build cannons in the middle of the map to save your gate? Apparently you do. Oh yeah, so there is a cannon out there in the middle map, but nothing defending this worker line. Uh, yeah. But he did get a nice drone drill there. He's building a cannon now in his worker line. Anyways, it's only one ling left. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think now Exit can just kind of play defensive, and they're just uh, enough ahead on workers and production. So we'll yeah, see how definitely. Masuchi fights their way back into this game. Yeah, if I if I am to be critical, I didn't really like the commit on the hatch, although it was a big win and it worked. Um, I think just trading the zealots against the links, there were so many zealots, uh, those trades would have been favorable and just reinforced with the zealots. Eventually you can get the hatch, but um, yeah, I, I would have preferred more trading and killing that sunk before it goes up, and then you can always bully the hatch. Mm -hmm. But of course, Exit is in a commanding position. Yeah, Zerg actually now trying to build some drones, it looks like. Um, but I don't know if that's even going to work out because, you know, this two gateway of Zealots, it's still uh, being produced. And so the Zerg is going to need some fighting units to deal with these Zealots as they come out gradually. And that's kind of the danger of this position as Zerg, if you only have one hatch, your larva is really limited, and so is your choices of what units you can build. Are the zealots interrupting the mining time a little bit? That sunken is a somehow an in-between. If you wanted to defend your mineral line, you would want it further left. And if you wanted to bust the ramp with it, then you would want it further right. It's mm -hmm kind of in the middle and doesn't accomplish either very well. Yeah, I think both these Sunkins were kind of panic Sunkins in their placement, uh, but they have kept the Zerg alive for the time being, so they have accomplished uh, you know, their task. Zerglings are able to deny this gas maybe, but Zealots are running back. It shouldn't be enough Zealots really for those links, so... Probably the gas will die. Yeah, and behind this Zerg, it looks like they're getting a Hydro Den and a third hatchery. And wow, uh, 
yeah, now the gas is going to go down. So these speedlings are kind of creating some havoc in, these, in the Protoss base. And I would say Protoss really needs some zealots on that ramp. So. Protoss getting actually speed upgrade on his uh, zealots now. Zerg is also back to mining gas. He mined 140 gas pretty early in the game, never used them, but now now he can start to put them to use. The Hydra speed upgrade is running, and I guess the range upgrade will come next together with some Hydras, and then he might be able to turn the tables and maybe kill their structure in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see how Exit decides to keep playing this Maybe looking to take an expansion here. It looks like they're placing a pylon on the lower, uh, on the low ground outside their base, and most likely we'll be placing a new nexus here. Yeah, that might be what Masuchi is hoping for with his hydras. If he's going for some kind of an aggressive hydra bust, but he's also going for Leia, so I'm, he's going for all the things. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. Since he's so behind, maybe it would be his chance to be really decisive with his Hydras and not go for a lair, but just all in with his Hydras and try and get a kill on the Nexus maybe, or um, for sure on those gateways. That might be, might be a higher percentage play than this, because this is again pretty middle in the road. You have a lair, that's great, but then you don't have the pressure, mm -hmm. so that's does what he wants. So here we see Protoss doing a big attack with a bunch of speed zealots and they're getting right onto this sunken, taking out the sunken. There is a good number of Hydralis scout, but they're kind of glitching right now. And the drone drill was pretty good, but they're now being focused down by zealots. So this is really not a battle that uh, Zerg could afford here, losing all these drones at the net. And we see Protoss has now a uh, commanding worker lead. So this Hydralis counterattack, I would say, is kind of maybe the last chance here for Zerg to get back in this game. They do have a good number of Hydralis. They're microing decently against these Zealots, and they may be able to take out these two gates in the middle. And behind this, uh, the Protoss has just expanded and, you know, kind of mass cannoned their net, but they don't have any gateway production in their main. So losing these gateways could set them back. Yeah, once that pylon falls, there's absolutely no units um, for Protoss that I can find on the map. And the gates will take a while that he's now building in his main. So the only thing defending his net are those cannons. Mm -hmm. and Hydras are notoriously strong against cannons, so maybe there's a chance. Yeah, I'm not sure. Exit committing in there for the second attack, uh, throwing away the Zealots. Did get some drones, uh, but now we do see total map control for Zerg, where they can kind of choose uh, how they want to play from here. They do lose a couple hydras there to those cannons, and seeing all these cannons at the front is kind of you got a choice to make as Zerg. Do you want to keep going with these hydralists, or are you going to try to drone up behind this? And it looks like Zerg has chosen to get a spire and start building some drones. So this game is gonna you know, continue on. Zerg is not feeling the need to, you know, go all in on some kind of buzz. Yeah, I feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity. I would have liked him to not go for the lair and the spire and just push the hydras. Um, then his counter could really do some damage. But like this, he he's basically pretty far behind, so it's hard to macro your way out of this. Protoss already has his Templar tag out, he's now coming on the map with DTs. There's no speed overlord, so these DTs should be able to do some, um, some good map control at the very least. And um, yeah, when you look at the workers, it's 25 to 41 right now. That's a tough spot for, for Zerg, who doesn't have a third base even started. And he won't start it, considering the Dark Templars are checking for it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this Dark Templar is 
Not gonna go into the net quite yet, because there is overlords here. Oh! Taking some damage on that Dark Templar. Uh, but as you said, checking for a third, there's even a probe in the bottom right, which is maybe setting up to take a hidden expansion here. Uh, but Protoss must be very comfortable in this game, knowing they're ahead on Eco, that they've denied a Zerg third base, and they've gotten all their tech out. So now they're adding up to six gateways, um, they're getting their upgrades, and it looks like they're trying to take a base here in the bottom right. They've added on two uh, cannons. Those cannons won't be too effective against those Mutalisks. Mutalisks. Uh, yeah. But the Mutalisk won't scout those cannons, so the Mutalisks are flying directly into the main where there are cannons going up. So the Mutas have been spotted, probably by that DT. Pay attention to who spotted it, but somebody did. Yes, a storm going down on those uh, Mutalisks actually, but kind of whiffing on those storms, getting a little bit of damage done. And yeah, uh, Protoss needs to buy time for all these cannons to get up. They're losing quite a few uh, High Templar though actually, which is really unfortunate. And now can the oh, Protoss actually, uh, Zerg I should say, pulling back with their Mutalisks, not over committing to that you know, uh, Yeah, that was great value with the Mutas to get those High Templars. Yeah, they may be able to deny this uh, gas here at the mat for a little while as they are microing down these probes, trying to even up the worker count. Um, but Protoss behind this, building some Dragoons, uh, getting their range upgrade which has only just started. They're going to have to be a little defensive now against these Mutalisks and uh, try to mass up a good ball of upgraded Protoss units so they can force these Mutalisks back on the defensive. What do you think? Is the Protoss main sufficiently defended against Mutalisk attacks? <laughs> yeah, Protoss definitely showing up uh, the favorable uh, use of cannons here. Definitely going heavy on cannon production. Yeah, it looks like the probes are quite blocked by all these cannons. They are not traveling optimally, but there are so many probes. But probably it doesn't even change the mining efficiency. <laughs> yeah, now Protoss looking like they're moving across to this third base location, losing a DT, uh, but they are able to scout that there's only a few Hydralists defending this ramp, so they may get on top of this. But there's no Templar with this army right now, and so they're going to need Templar to deal with all these Hydralists. And losing those Templar in the main looks like it's going to come back to bite exit here. Yeah, and the Hydralis able to clean up this Protoss course. Again, Protoss looks like they're targeting the third hatch, which they did get damaged, but they lost a lot of units there. Yeah, it looks looks like somehow Masuchi is is outclassing Exit, um, because Exit is always getting these great advantages, and then. Um, not able to capitalize really, and now I actually like Masuchi's position, or at least I like it a lot more than I did a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, definitely a scrappy game from Masuchi, just uh, staying in the game, trying to get back in the game with this Mutalus Micro, taking a storm there, oh, and losing all the Mutalus except one. But they've done their job, they bought Masuchi some time to uh, get that third base going, and they've managed to make that first attack for Exit, like a complete failure there with the uh, six gateways, and now Exit has mined out of the main, so they're going to have to try to transfer their probes here to the bottom right. So we'll see if this is scouted by Mizuchi. Yeah, there's already so many cannons there at this uh, expansion, but still no Nexus. He's invested so much um, and so far gained absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we'll see how this <laughs> risky transfer goes. Um, it's bound to go through some of the two overlords that are sitting in the way. I guess he's only transferring to the net though, so that will be mined With very uh, diligently. Yes. <laughs> and actually more Mutalists coming out from Masuchi, so Masuchi seeing the effectiveness of these Mutalists against uh, no Stargate play, and they're adding on some even more Mutalists.
And yeah, they're gonna start uh, microing down these probes. Again, take another nice storm from exit, actually. And now some Let's Archon see if we can get back there. It looks like a tough, tough ask. Yeah, that's Maybe very frustrating. <laughs> Trying to move an Archon around against Mutalis, that's for sure. Here we see some Hydralis moving in here, uh, but actually retreating once they see the large amount of Templar, I think. So, Masuchi comfortable on this third base, and seeing that they can't really get anything done against Exit, just waiting for the later game, it looks like. Um, but now some Lurkers on the field, so they may end up setting a, a little bit of a Lurker contain. And we do see an OBS in production, but you're going to need something more than just Zealot Templar to deal with these Lurkers. You're going to need some more goons, I would say. Yeah. But it's little nice does Masuchi know that in the bottom right, there's actually now going some mining going on. Mm -hmm. So this contain isn't really hurting the Protoss as much as, as he assumes maybe. True, it's hard to get a good read on the game here if you're Masuchi just because this game has been so awkward and then now that there is this third base mining in the bottom right, uh, I can see that throwing off kind of the assumptions that Masuchi is making. Masuchi must think, look I've got him contained onto just one base mining right now. Um, I should be ahead and I should be able to play defensive. Uh, exit maybe clearing a path to transfer some probes here. So far being very safe and not transferring any probes to that third base. So it has been very uh, a well a well defended base, a safe base, but it hasn't proven so economically uh, advantageous just yet. Yeah, probably it's still maybe even. I think he's invested more in the cannons than he's mined, probably. But it, it will pay. Those mineral blocks are thousand five hundred minerals each. Yeah. Yeah, Masuchi is scouting some of the expansions, but missing out on that uh, hidden base always uh, kind of brutal. Here we see uh, some Templar getting focused down by the Hydralis, and Exit is actually kind of flanked this Lurker field and is now just going for it. A big engage happening here right outside the Protoss net, and it looks like Exit's able to clean this up with their uh, upgraded Goon, Zealot, and uh, Templar Force. Yeah, he lost quite a lot of High Templars against the Mutas in the initial stages of the battle. And now he has one Storm. The second Templar doesn't have the energy for a Storm. So I fear that it's maybe a repeat of that attack before where he just didn't have enough Storms. Mm -hmm. Last time he didn't have any Storms. Now he has one. Let's so, see how mm -hmm. this goes. Yeah. Committing across the map again, they're in danger of getting surrounded, and with only one storm, that may not be enough. Uh, there's the storm going down. Uh, the storm. Yeah. But it looks like they will get cleaned up here. Yeah, these attacks are rough. Exit has the economic lead with the extra base and all that, but... Um, Whenever he goes out with his army, he gets punished. Yeah, definitely. And Protoss uh, can't really replenish their army quite as quickly as Zerg can. So losing these big armies has kind of hurt the Protoss in that you need to mass up a, a sizable army to trade effectively. And here, finally, Masuchi is going to see all these cannons on top of this ramp. And that's definitely a bad feeling, uh, seeing that Protoss has already taken a base and it's, you know, going to be very difficult to bust on top of that without some kind of uh, maybe drop or dark swarm or something to break all those I cannons. Think, I think if he were brave enough, he could have actually busted that right now because there's no units and nothing to block the ramp. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a lot of hydrolisks. Hydrolisks are really good against the cannons if you just move them up the ramp, if you manage mm -hmm. to move them up the ramp. Yeah, I guess Misuchi doesn't know that there are no units, no High Templars, nothing up there. Yeah, Misuchi just going for it here, 
trying to bust the net, sending in their Lurkers and Hydralisk, taking a lot of damage from Storm though, so it looks like this attack also will get cleaned up. And there was just so many cannons out here for X defending all their bases, it really makes it hard for Mizuchi to try to do a counterattack, and there the game is called. Yeah. Wow, yeah, the game was very back and forth. Um, I felt like Exit should have had it much more convincingly, much earlier, after the successful kill of the hatch. Um, but yeah, he gets gets the W in the end, so um, I guess that's that's what counts at the end. Yeah, Exit able to take that game, but I think if you're Misuchi, you've got to be a little bit uh, of confidence going into the next game, knowing that you uh, were able to kind of battle back and make it into a more back and forth game than it initially appeared to be with that uh, nine nine gate or the the two proxy gates in the middle being so effective. Yeah, definitely. All of the standard things went heavily in Misuchi's favor. It was the the cheesy things that that helped Exit get this strong lead and even then it was hard for him to close it out so if I were Masuchi I would feel that um, if only I managed to get it into a kind of standard game I could probably just win this through macro and army control. Mm -hmm. I've, I've hosted, oh there you are. Yeah. So we're going into game number two now uh, between these two players and this one will be on uh, Polaris Rhapsody. Yeah, Polaris Rhapsody is a map that um, previous to this CPL season I hadn't played in quite a while. But apparently it's, uh, for whatever reason, it's uh, in back in the favors. Uh, the pros are playing it again, much more. And yeah, it's, I think it's a, a older map. I played it some years ago. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience on this map. I do know there are um, some interesting features here. We'll see as the game goes on. It kind of make this map unique. I think there is um, some, uh, some different like high ground locations as well as some corner bases with two gases, right? So we'll be interested to see how the Zerg ends up playing this one, uh, knowing what happened in the last game. If they try to play more defensive, already we see Exit placing a gateway in their base or a pylon, I should say, in their base. Yeah, so I looked it up. Uh, Polaris Rhapsody is originally from 2010. Mm -hmm. It was for the 2010 Shinhan Bank Pro League. Yeah. And so that's yeah. old. <laughs> but those were yeah, kind of the high times of uh, Pro League, so. Yeah, high point but it SD. has been played now in, in ASL and um, Ultimate Battle. And so it's uh, somehow it's again on Vogue to play this map in the, in the pro scene. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what made it come back into favor there. Uh, but it's definitely a, a new map for CPL and a new map for a lot of CPL players. So it'll be nice to see how uh, these two tier zero players uh, take this, their take on this map for uh, Protoss first Zerg. And we see Exit uh, going for, again, two gateways uh, before expanding. And so, most likely, they will try for another Zella pressure type game. Yeah, Masuchi uh, sends his drone to expand a little bit early and hides it behind the mineral line so that when Protoss comes with his probe, he sees nothing and he has to go into the main to check what the pool timing is. Mm -hmm. um, and then, once the probe is gone, he can. Uh, Masuchi can place it down the hatch, so that's one of the tricks that you can use to to more stably put down your hatchery and not get blocked by by a good probe micro. Yeah, I think that's a it's clever little move that we see. I think Masuchi did it in the last game as well, just to deny that probe from any harassment and set up your own expansion. A little mind game. Uh, Masuchi actually taking the gas of exit. So X is pretty much locked in here on just producing zealots. Uh, zealots and probes is kind of the key thing here for Protoss. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the of the gas of the gas steel. 
Um, considering that he scouted there's two gates, the Protoss usually um, either he wants to just put on a lot of pressure on the map directly, and that's only minerals that he needs for that, or he wants to go into an uh, expansion with the salads and also that's only minerals. So it's rare to see two gate into tech. Um, so I, I don't really like the gas. Either. Yeah, we see the zealots now making their way across the map here. Uh, so they are going to look to put out some pressure on the Zerg. Zerg has quite a few zealots back at home. And maybe they're going to... Yeah, they're placing a creep colony here. So this should be safe. Uh, looking at these numbers right now, this is a lot of Zerglings just to deal with uh, three zealots with a fourth zealot coming across the map now. Yeah. I think Zerg will hold. I would have liked the, um, the Sunken a, a little bit earlier and maybe just build less circlings. Because mm -hmm. right now we have 9 to 18 workers, so we are pretty behind economically. Um, and we'll have to somehow make use of these circlings um, in, a, in a way that hurts progress to get, to get even again. Yeah, Zerg is actually going for the lair. Uh... And as you said, they spent a lot of their larvae on these early wings and haven't done anything to influence Protoss' eco besides taking their, their gas. So Protoss has been able to just mass up the correct amount of probes that they need. So their uh, worker count is way ahead right now. Some lings escaping. Wow. escaping. There's even a, a cannon already going up in Protoss' mineral line, mm -hmm. which Matsuchi knows, since his gas can scout that. So it seems like Exit wants to wants to be sure that he doesn't die to some ling run by that goes into his mineral line. Yeah, and we see Matsuchi is threatening that ling run by, uh, but Exit for the time being defending that ramp and now actually pulling once that... Uh... The uh, cannon gets up, exit reinforcing now this kind of soft contain that they're doing with uh, zealots. Uh, forcing out more and more links from Masuchi. And it is indeed um, two gates into tech. So, um, although I said that that's not usually how it's played, this is what exit wants to do here. And look at Masuchi, are they going to be able to get this pylon and unpower the gateways? They are, so they snuck some links into the Protoss main and managed to unpower the gateways for the time being. So that was a, a very effective kind of tactic to delay, but they did lose their, uh, you know, counterattacking links for, you know, one building. So kind of a yeah. risky play. Uh, here come the Zealots for uh, exit, engaging with that uh, Sunken and fighting these links. Uh, and it looks like this might just be enough zealots. They're kind of overwhelming the reserve for the time being. And now they get on this ramp, and that's seven zealots. Kind of getting split off here, uh, losing a few zealots that were caught off by the zerglings. But now they're into the drone line in the main, and the drones are getting drilled out here to fight these zealots. But they're just gonna uh, fall relatively quickly against zealots like this. There's really not enough Zerg out here to kill these uh, Zealots right now. Yeah, great damage. It would have been completely devastating if he had positioned those two Zealots on the ramp mm -hmm. instead of uh, allowing the links back up. But he still has great numbers. Yeah, again, going for a building, trying to take out this uh, Spire, but only able to take it to about one-third health not able to clean it up and losing their zealots so uh this attack is kind of uh you know fizzling out now for exit but they will go for some drones it's five drones it might be fizzling out but zerk has already fizzled yeah it's done its damage for sure uh but the yeah. uh yeah a good game is called here for this Yeah, that was rough. I think uh, Masuchi overmade circlings and uh, should have maybe defended with a second sunk and, and built some more drones. When you commit to so many circlings, then um, your economy is so low. So it's it gets really hard to actually um, 
to match the Protoss economy. Okay, so let's get into match number two. Uh, it looks like we're going to be watching Yenta against Nam, Thomas. Ah, two players that I know. Excellent. Let me just fix our overlay here. Okay. Okay, and I will host up the next game. Okay, spawning in the top right uh, of Fighting Spirit as the Zerg in a, a color that I can't really name. It is IRK's Yenta. Yes, and in the uh, top left on Fighting Spirit as the purple Protoss, we have Nom Toss. Yeah, these are two players that I'm familiar with. Uh, Yenta, of course, is um, also IRK. IRK player on my team. So that's clear that I know him. Nomtos I actually played um, th this week, so in, in week two, mm -hmm. he was my opponent. So yeah, I have uh, witnessed his PVZ, his evolved PVZ after Ooh. learning this lesson that we're about to watch. <laughs> okay. The new and upgraded uh, Protoss for uh, yeah. So we saw some pretty quick games in the last series, but it looks like Nomtos already uh, opting for a pylon at the Nat, so maybe a little bit more uh, standard Protoss for Sir. You may be seeing here. And there is the first gateway going down, so this might just be a gateway expand. Yenta is opting for the 9 pool, so he didn't build the Overlord before the pool. Uh, like in the last game, Masuchi in both games went for the over pool, which I would say is the most standard, safe opening that you can do in PvZ. But Yenta is doing a little bit more aggressive, the 9 pool, uh, allowing for earlier links. We'll see what he can do with those. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, we'll have to see how this plays out. Both players uh, kind of opting for a little bit more aggressive builds. The Protoss, though, uh, they are going to be able to scout this 9 pool and see that the links are on the way. So that will allow them to maybe throw down a forge and, and play a little bit more defensive against these early links. Yeah, I'm actually not quite sure why the 9 pool has come into favor, but it definitely has, and it must be a good thing against the gate first builds, because that's the only reason I can imagine why people would be playing this build. Uh, I guess it forces the Protoss into a defensive stance and um, makes it a little bit um, easier that you don't have to micro or sell it behind your mineral line, mm -hmm. uh, because you have the pressure to keep him back. Yeah, I could see it being like the best uh, defense is a good offense, that kind of strategy. And here we see uh, some Zerglings keeping the Zealots pinned back, defending the gaps in this wall. So, as you said, there will be no Zealots behind the mineral line for the time being here, as Protoss is uh, pretty much just trying to defend their net, which they haven't even placed a Nexus at just now. So Zerg is actually going to be able to double expand behind this. Looks good. I like the expansion timing. The gas is a little bit late, I think. So from what I saw, um, Ziki play the nine pool uh, in CPP. He takes the gas at pretty much the normal time, so uh, around 2:40, um, and not like we saw here 
a little bit after three minutes. I guess you want your spire timing for the Corsairs to be a little bit tighter than, than Yenta is doing it right now. Yeah, that will be the next uh, thing to see is Protoss going to go for those Corsairs. They are taking their gas in the main, uh, so they will uh, be able to tech up here as the game goes on. And they are taking their expansion at the net. All this time they're constantly producing Zealots, so now they've got enough Zealots, they've got a cannon up, catching two uh, Zerglings there, and now they're going for their counter-attack. And what does Zerg have to stop this? They've kind of droned up behind their uh, early lean kind of smoke screen, and so now they need some Sunkins, I think. I don't know how they're going to be able to hold these uh, five Zealots. I think you want to hold it with uh, links that you built once he moves out. So you have to buy time now and try and not lose too many links whilst you do it and no drones if possible. Yeah, pulling those drones, I think they did just lose one and now the links uh, engaging with these zealots. But this is a good fight for uh, Protoss as they were able to just clean up all those links without losing a single zealot. And now this three hatch production of links has to come in here and uh, try to overwhelm these zealots, but fighting a little too quickly there maybe Yenta did as uh, they lost all their zerglings and only taking out essentially like shields for these uh, zealots. Uh, but more and more things being produced and they are going to engage with these drones now. Hopefully they don't lose too many drones to clean up these zealots however as the uh, Zealots are focusing down drones. It looks like Yenta will be able to clean it up now. Zealots are hiding behind the middle <laughs> line, but I don't have any health left, so yeah. it's not as bad as it looks. Sounds like there's no way for Zerg to avoid the Zealot behind the middle line, as we see some uh, Zealots able to get there. Uh, and now a Zealot trying to scout this third base location. Uh, Yenta though has pretty much cleaned up this attack and is now uh, pumping out slings. So maybe they will try a counterattack of their own. Yeah, there's only one cannon there and that wall isn't tight. The, above the gateway there's two slots, so you would need two zealots or two probes to block that. Um, yeah, unfortunate. The links could have just run through to the main, taking two shots, maybe losing one link. Mm -hmm. Because he has speed done, and there are six. There were six links. This now one's a chance. Ooh. That's not enough. The probe comes. It should be able to block it. Ah, uh, this and was brutal. Tough. Good defense from Namtas here. Get, maybe getting a little lucky there, but able to defend against these zerglings. Pulling that probe just in time to kind of discourage Yenta from going in there. And now we see a Corsair already out on the field. And yeah, where is the Spire? Where is the um, kind of tech for Zerg to deal with this Corsair? Well, I think the Spore is the plan. There's a um, Spore making in the natural. But of course, the Spore can't defend the Overlord in the Protoss main. So um, that's going to die. And also, the third base doesn't have a spore and it doesn't have an overlord so once our dark templar comes on the map that could be a, a danger that you can't get detection there but uh, we don't see a templar archive up yet so that's a threat that is not uh, not imminent yet mm -hmm. so the corsair does see this uh, spore colony and now going into the main to try to get a scout they're gonna see this uh third base up and running with a few drones at it. Uh, and most likely this creep colony will be turned into a spore to defend against any kind of Corsair or Dark Templar aggression as we do see the Templar Archives is now nearing completion for Protoss. And yeah, Namtas able to pick off uh, Overlord here in the bottom right and there's pretty much nothing Yenta can do uh, to save this Overlord. We see um... There's melee, uh, the upgrade is, uh, for Zerg is melee attack mm -hmm. upgrade, which is an unusual upgrade in ZVP. The, usually you see missile attacks upgraded, 
but we also um, don't see a hydralisk then, so it seems like Yenta wants to cook up something spicy, um, some circling based play, it seems. Yeah, I mean, that's the move out. Yeah, this is a lot of salads, and there's not a lot of links yet. Uh, also consider that the salads have plus one, so links are really not very good against these salads. We have to hold this with our sunkens. Yeah, a couple sunkens being morphed in here at the third base, and the zealots are just going to go right in there. The SimCity is okay, but the zealots are going to get on top of these sunkens. Here come the links uh, to try to reinforce this position. The drones are uh, being forced to fight here. Looks like this looks deep. Suck. I think. <laughs> Very close battle here. The sunken's just barely getting cleaned up, and now all the drones look like they're gonna fall. A new round of drones just popping, but that's not really what the Zerg wanted at this time. And now it looks like this third base may get taken out as there is a no fighting units here to defend for Zerg, and this Sunken is not going to get morphed in time. More Zealots being streamed across the map for Protoss. Zerg is being forced to produce only uh, Zerglings, which are not really uh, faring too well against these upgraded Zealots. Yeah, even when they finish their plus one attack upgrade, uh, they still will, um, will not be optimal against the Zealots. Usually you want the armor upgrade to match the Protoss' attack upgrade. Yeah, this armor upgrade is about two-thirds done, but it is at this exposed third base location, and it looks like this Evo Chamber is going to be taken out now by uh, Protoss and all these overwhelming Zealots. Yeah, that's GG. Yeah, for a second there I thought Yenta could hold it. His, uh, his sunkens were well placed, and um, if he were were producing only circlings there. I think he holds, but he, he somehow he was too optimistic and built a round of drones. So there were six, five or six drones popping at the moment where the circlings just all died. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there. And of course you can't lose your third base uh, in that position, then you are much too far behind. Yeah, that last battle at the third base was kind of hard to tell were, were the Sunkins in a good enough position or not, and it looks like uh, those upgraded Zealots just too strong there. And as you mentioned, those uh, drones coming in kind of at the worst time. Yeah. Uh, but here we are in game number two. Game number two on Polaris Rhapsody in the top left in dark blue. We have IRK Sienta down 0 1. You'll have to win one now to get us to the rubber match. Yeah, and down here in the bottom right, we have uh, Nam's Toss as the uh, maybe green Protoss. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what this color is really. It looks. Yeah, I have a strong association with it, but it isn't the nice word, so I'm not going to say <laughs> Okay. So we have another uh, PVZ game here. This one's on Polaris, I... and it looks like Namtas is going for a pylon at the wall. I have to interrupt. We have five pool played by Yenta, so Yenta um, might be a little bit tilted, or <laughs> this is a special strat, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, personally, when I play a five pool, and then I'm tilted, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see if it can work. It depends a lot on what Nomtos is going to open with. I guess a gate would be preferable for Nomtos. And there is the gateway going down. So now I guess the question is, can the circlings kill the pylon before the salad comes out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we see the circlings on the way now. Uh, the probe is going to get over there and scout, as this is a two-player map. Yeah, so it might be really a, a prepared build by Yenta, um, because the last map was a four-player map, and playing this kind of a build there um, makes it hard 
because you don't know where your opponent is and you don't really have the, the drones to afford a scout. So Nantas losing their scouting probe, they're not really getting to see the pull timing, but they must be able to tell now, judging by these early links, that they are going to need to pull some probes. So it looks like they've yep. pulled a bunch of probes to try to defend that gateway. It looks like they've taken seven, but uh, yep. there's a bunch of links on the way. And there's the Zealot. So I think there's no way that these links can do damage now. Well, it remains to be seen how tight this uh, wall is, as we do see some links getting through. Yeah. Taking some hits from those probes, uh, but the links to making it to main, yeah. Yeah. So this is what Yenta wanted. Uh, ideally, they would have traded uh, better and, and denied that uh, that gateway from getting zealots out, but even so they do take out that first zealot and now they're just trading against probes and getting into the main is, uh, as I was trying to say, like what uh, Zerg needs in this situation to try to make this game as scrappy as possible and trade effectively with these Zerglings. But another zealot is out here and we see more links right, on the way. With, with the probes, catching the links, putting some damage on, these links are all low except one, so yeah, they're going to get cleaned up, and then maybe we can pluck the wall before those four additional circlings arrive. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it remains to be seen. Yeah, uh, it's definitely easier said than done to uh, plug a wall against circlings. Uh, the circlings just kind of poke me in and out. Uh, but I don't think this was enough damage from Yenta. Yenta is now actually adding on drones and hatcheries, so maybe trying to transition out of this Zergling play. But I don't think they killed very many probes with this attack. Yeah. I also think that it's not enough damage. Maybe he can slither in. But it's it looks like the cannon will finish, and once the cannon is finished, so risky to move that salad. Your your gateway still has half health. Just stand still with your salad. <laughs> Maybe trying to bait the Zerglings in. Uh, second cannon on the way now. After that first cannon does finish morphing. So Protoss looks like they've stabilized here. They've got their uh, their wall up. They're morphing in cannons. They're going to be able to take their net. And now Zerglings are going to be very much less effective against this defense that Nantas has set up. Yeah, once that cannon finishes, I would like to see Nantas move out with his three salads, maybe build a fourth also, and actually put some pressure because um, Zerg is really scrambling to actually drone, finally to drone. And if Protoss puts pressure on now, then um, then you will deny this chance to drone. So it would be huge now to just push with those salads. And with two cannons, probably you can feel quite uh, quite confident that you that you are safe to a counter attack. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Knowing the positions is key here, and the Protoss is now sending out a probe to scout what the Zerg has been up to this whole time. As Zerg, I mean, as Protoss did lose their scouting probe initially to those first six things that were out on the map. They're going to need to see what Yent has been up to. And yeah, us knowing that Yent has taken this uh, third or this natural expansion and is adding on drones and getting a Hydra Den, this would be the uh, good time for our Protoss player to move across the map. But with these Hydralis being added, it looks like Yent will again go for some aggression. And here come the Zealots going across the map. Yeah, two hatch hydrolisk is of course um, next all in. <laughs> yes. Did the all the in five. work? All in again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think with the hydras he should be able to defend the salads easily, but uh, Protoss will know that there's very fast hydras. Can maybe add some cannons if if needed. Yeah, Protoss seeing those Hydras instantly turns around and looking to retreat their Zealots back to their wall most likely, uh, knowing that they're not really going to trade that well with these uh, 
Hydra's and Zerg being forced that's out in numbers right now for Zerg. So Protoss has gotten a Cybernetics Core and a Citadel of a Dune behind this and adding on an extra uh, cannon. Now I don't... the cannon will help against the Hydra's that we know are incoming. Uh, but that Cybernetics Core... Uh, maybe allowing for DTs to come out? Yeah, I think he just wants to get his tech up eventually. Uh, there's no big rush in that. But also the threat isn't super huge. Yeah, I mean, the number of Hydras isn't so high. And I think he just feels confident enough to be able to tech. DTs are also nice to defend um, when Zerg does something like that because he has no overload speed. So uh, as long as there's no overload sitting there, you can maybe push push back with the DT. Yenta did bring two overlords with them, so they've got two overlords over here. Um, but yeah, the DT could uh, force back these Hydras for a little while. Uh, it looks like the Hydras are going to be able to take out this first gateway, uh, and pretty much the only gateway that uh, Namtas has though, so Namtas is going to be relying just on these cannons to deal with the amount of Hydras which are coming across the map. And they're just massing cannons right now. Yeah, before the forge goes down. <laughs> but he has a second forge in his main, so he can do spamming those if needed. And Yenta is just adding on Hydras, so they may try for some kind of uh, timing here. Trying to get on top of these cannons and focus them on one by one. It's actually interesting how low the probe count is by Nomtos. I would have expected him uh, to have a few more probes, but I guess he felt threatened and, and cut a lot of probes. Mm -hmm. Now he's making none in his... Okay, when I speak he, he starts, but he he wasn't making in his natural, so he just started to make them again. Yeah, Namtas may be cutting probes for extra defense here, and here's Jenta trying to get on top of these cannons, but actually unable to do so. And now being forced back by those zealots, which are kind of screening for the cannons, uh, stopping the hydras from getting right on top of them. Quite a lot of hydras. It, it is a little bit scary for Nomtas, but he's added some gates, and once the once the production kicks in, I think um, it'll be a lot more comfortable. Yeah, this is a good defense from Nomtas with all these cannons ready. I don't see Yenta breaking this, but Yenta is adding in more and more hydralis uh, streaming across the map. So there may be a timing before uh, Storm gets in here, but Protoss getting double upgrades, aiming for the late game it looks like. Just trying to survive this uh, Hydralisk bust, essentially. Yeah, also the Zealots have speed, so they can actually fight quite well against the Hydras um, if the Hydra numbers aren't too large. And there's a double forge, both spinning in the the main mm -hmm. of Nantos, so he's going for heavy upgrades as well. Yeah, Nantos also getting Storm and adding in some Templars now, so if there is going to be a timing for Yenta to just go for it, it's pretty much now uh, before Storm gets out on the field because Storm will really allow Protoss to trade uh, very well against any kind of aggression from these Hydras. Yeah, but I don't think the Hydra number is sufficient to fight all those cannons plus the Zealots. Just the cannons, yes, but those zealots, they are pretty beefy and they will tank quite a lot of hydra shots. And meanwhile, the cannons will do damage, so I don't think he can. I don't think Yenta can. Yeah, it will be an interesting little engage here, I think, uh, between the zealots. Can the hydras force out the zealots too far away from the cannons and, and catch them exposed, maybe, and whittle their numbers down that way? So here's Yenta going for it with their, it looks like, two to three control groups worth of hydralisks. The Zealots are a little bit ahead, but uh, yeah, they're pulled back to these cannons now. Finish it. There's one and a half, two more storms left now. 
So I think Nantas can hold now. Yeah, and this production now kicking in from all these gateways in the main. It looks like Nantas has done it here. Uh, but Yenta going for it again, adding on more Hydras. And they've kind of got no choice but to go for it. Taking out these Zealots, there's actually very few Zealots out on the field now for Protoss. And just these four cannons. And two Storms. If the Storms completely whiff, then maybe Yenta has a chance. But if the Storms hit well, then there's no chance. Yeah, it will come down to some of these Storms. And if Yenta can get on top of these high, uh, these cannons with their Hydra. Uh, but these cannons are just trading very effectively and they're uh, limiting this Hydra count which has never gotten to that uh, critical mass. Of course, six Zealots producing at once is great. Um, Namtos feels confident enough now to switch to building six goons at once. Um, so I guess... Yeah, that, that kind of production is pretty hard to overwhelm with two hatches. Mm -hmm. And Yenta, I think, sensing this, adding on a third hatch at the mineral only. And still producing Hydralisks, though. Yeah, um, when you do these kind of very aggressive busts and you can't break them, then it's a little bit sad because you know that at this point you're so all in, you can't really go back into macro. But it feels anticlimactic to just say GG because your attack didn't work. But the moment Protoss moves out on this map, um, it will be a very one-sided battle. Um, or it should be, at least, if the control is anywhere uh, near okay. Yeah, and here we see Protoss now able to take out this Overlord and they are going to start moving out onto the map. Maybe Yento will go for a counterattack or something here as Protoss is moving out with their whole army. Uh, and looking to take a third base, this could leave them a little exposed. As, as like you said, Yenta really has no options here. They really can't engage the Protoss army uh, head to head. Namtos is uh, actually even trying to get a third base up now. He's just... Okay, there's a the GG. <laughs> it, it was anticlimactic in the end. We didn't see the fight. <laughs> But uh, Yenta realizes that his army just doesn't have quality or quantity to fight this kind of a uh, Protoss ball. Okay, so there goes our second series uh, of the day. With Nantos able to take that one over Yenta. Did you keep track which teams uh these players were, so what's the team score okay. right now? So right now it's 2 0 for, um, I would want to say, flying SCVs. Exit and Namtos are both on flying SCVs. And I think they were yeah. able to take down the Beach Buddies of StarCraft players so far. But there is a chance for the um, other players in Tier 0 to come through for Beach Buddies of StarCraft and even up this uh, matchup as we are going to get into our uh, third series of the day. Let's do it. Okay, uh, I'm not quite sure what these players' names are, but I guess uh, Saurabi, is that his name or is that just his in-game name? Um, we'll see, he spawns in the top left on Fighting Spirit as the Teal Zerg. Yeah, and we have um, Jinjin spawning in the top right as our uh, Grey Terran. And this map will be Fighting Spirit, and yeah, the Jinjin using a different username here, quit stress game, so maybe a little bit confusing. They're discussing lag right now. <laughs> yeah, um, I've played quite a few games against uh, Jinjin. Um, he's a really strong player. But from what I've gathered, he's quite prone to, to getting emotional. 
Um, so if things don't don't go his way, then then it can be um, the quality of his games can deteriorate quickly. Yeah, um, I have the same kind of vague knowledge of Jinjin as well. I think they were uh, known for actually translating a lot of Korean content into English. So that's how I know Jinjin. Yes. Uh, helpful with Terran guides. Uh, but yeah, a little bit prone to maybe raging too quickly. So we'll see if Sarabi is able to maybe make use of this knowledge or if they are able to game plan for this game. But so far, uh, very standard openings from both players. Uh, taking that 12 hatch for Sarabi and Jinjin going with the normal uh, rats timing and not taking a gas. So most likely going bio here it looks like, or at least maybe a Rax expand. And both players actually getting that first scout off. So Jinjin able to see the uh, spool, the spawning pool, uh, spawning pool timing here. Yeah, it looks like pretty normal two hatch opening from Saurabi. And we'll see what what Jinjin comes up with. For for now, it's just um, uh, barracks expand with no marine. So pretty. Uh, economic opening by Jinjin. Yeah, definitely both players uh, just spamming out workers right now. And since they were able to scout their opponent on the first try, they're pretty safe to just... They've agreed, uh, we don't need fighting units for now. So they're just adding to their eco. Jinjin now adding on a gas. Uh, but this looks like it's going to be a two-hatch mutilist play. Or at least I should say a two-hatchery play from our... Uh, Zerg player as they are adding on that layer and they've already taken their gas. Yeah, this is the most standard way of playing ZBT at the moment. The two hatch most probably muta. Uh, meanwhile, I think the gas timing of Jinjin is not typical. It's a little bit faster. We'll mm -hmm. see what, what he's going to do. When he played against me, he sometimes whipped out the Valkyrie builds. Mm -hmm. Uh, which which I'm not very practiced against, and they of course are very strong against Muta. Let's see if he has something like this planned also. Yeah, it looks like a factory will go down here for Jinjin with that first 100 gas, so that would lead me to believe potentially a Valkyrie play here is incoming. Still mining this gas as well, but no signs of, uh, you know, any use of that gas besides, you know, mech units as they haven't placed an engineering bay or academy which could be another use of that early gas for Terran uh, but scouting this Zerg Spire so getting a good understanding that Mutalists are on the way here for Zerg yeah it's, it's nice to get that confirmation but uh, in Terran's shoes I would be 90 or 95 percent certain that it's a Spire build nobody does Lurker openings that I that I see. Yeah, Jinjin getting a very good scout off, keeping this SCV alive and able to see the spires about halfway done. And now we see a Zergling speed it looks like. And actually now Jinjin going straight for that uh, starport and adding in an academy. So this does look like a Valkyrie play from my understanding as we are going to see the engineering bay go down. I think they would have started uh, Armory by now if they actually were going Vaults, but we'll see. Yeah, the Academy is done and he should be researching Stim sometime soon, I think. If he wants to rely on Bio to defend the Mutas, Stim and Range are the two most important upgrades to get. And right now, Mutas are in production and the Academy is not blinking, which, which is very yeah, the Academy, uh, yeah, some medics on the way, but so far, like you said, no uh, stim done. The engineering bay just finishing, so turrets are going to go up ASAP here for Jinjin to try to defend and buy time for these uh, Jinjin to mass some actual fighting units, because right now all they have is a few marines with, you know, as you were saying, like, basically no upgrades. Yeah, and the armory is almost finished, so it, indeed it should be a Valkyrie build, and maybe maybe you just can't afford to get 
stim and range whilst also getting the Valkyrie so quickly. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on the on the side of Terran builds. Yeah, we see some uh, uh, Mutalists getting on top of that SCB line at the net. There's only two uh, turrets here, so the Mutalists were able to micro around and take out a few uh, SCBs. So actually, I would say pretty good Mutalist micro here, losing one Mutalist. And now here's the Valkyrie out. Um, so that will Stim definitely awesome. help. Okay. Yeah. One, one annoying thing, there's a STV stuck in the top right corner of Jinjin's base. Um, he might be able to fix that if he just lifts the eBay, but I'm, I'm not sure what it's doing. So I think that's to stack Valkyries. We'll see. Uh, but uh -huh. That's a use for that STV. If you do uh, come into this you know, problem as Terran, you could stack your air units using it. Yeah, it makes sense. Protoss also likes to do that for the Corsair stacking, but uh, for Valkyries, I would have thought that the numbers are usually so small. Yeah, uh, I would kind of agree with you. It's not necessarily essential. Uh, and it doesn't look like the Valkyries are stacked with that um, SCB, considering there is only two out right now. But that could come in handy as the game progresses and more Valkyries are added on if Jinjin does decide to keep doing that. Jinjin with Stim and now getting range on those marines and looking to actually move out. I think they saw this third base. Uh, so they are trying to put some pressure onto the Zerg while the Zerg only has a Mutalist out to defend. But Zerg is actually producing a bunch of Sunkins at their net and now switching over to Hydras. Yeah, some scans going down. So Jinjin has seen this third base here. Yeah, and he's going into vultures with with mines. So the plan for Jinjin is to take the map control with uh, with the mines, and then to expand like crazy himself if if my practice games against him are any indication. Yeah, Jinjin actually lifting off this engineering bay. I'm not sure what the long term game plan is, as they have not started upgrades for either bio or mech here. Um, but they are able to get on top of this third base and they took out the drones here that were mining and the Mutalists are going to come back and try to clean this up but the Marine spread is pretty good and the Valkyrie is doing so much damage to this Mutaball. Here come the Scourge. Uh, they're going to need to connect on these Valkyries. I think there needs to be Zerglings here though. Um, the Scourge unable to take out a single Valkyrie and now the Mutalists just get shredded. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty pretty rough. In those eggs there are circlings, but I think the marines are in time to kill the hatchery. Yeah, that was uh, brutal to watch for Zerg as they did lose all their mutalists and the Valkyries are able to escape and be repaired. Jinjin behind this actually bunkering up their net, uh, maybe afraid of a counterattack and, and getting those vultures with mines out as you said. And now starting into plus one vehicle weapons upgrade. So I think this means Jinjin will actually start adding on some factories here um, and go into more of a mech follow up. But Lurker's out now for Zerg and they are getting their hive on the way. But losing that third base and all your mutalists definitely sets you back. Um, so we'll see if there's a way back into this game for Zerg. They weren't able to really get a counter attack off while losing their third. Um, and if they lose math control here to these vultures, uh, it could be brutal. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty unavoidable to, to lose map control at least for a short while. Um, because these mines, if you don't have speed overlords, um, it's just very hard uh, to to actually move on the, on the map mm -hmm. and vultures are so good against circlings so you can't just uh, clear the mines but by suiciding it. Ooh, and here's a mine. Find, find the path. Yeah, and the workers taking some damage to a mine there, uh, but they are able to get over here to the Zerg net or to the Terran net. Again, taking a hit to those mines though. 
So the four front two lurkers are very damaged, so if they try and move up even more, they'll both die to the next mine or, or to the marines. Um, so I guess Sarawi will just stay stay there for now. Yeah, we see Jinjin now adding on factories, uh, getting tanks and siege mode too. So they have amassed a bunch of gas and they're going to switch into mech here, lifting off their racks and taking a bottom right expansion. Which I gotta say is kind of risky. They've already taken, added a third CC, so you'd think they would take that uh, natural third base here uh, at about the 3 o'clock position. And yeah, scanning these lurkers. Books. Yeah, he will take both, it looks like. Or try to, anyway. Yeah. And these lurkers forced to retreat, taking some shots from these marine medic. And now Jinjin knows the Zerg has taken this base at 12 o'clock. He may start sieging it up with the forces he has available. Overlord speed is three quarters done, so Zerg still feels very constricted, can't move on the map, and uh, it's hard to to do something against siege tanks. Um, the, the best weapon Zerg really has against siege tank pushes is Mutalisks, but with three stacked um, Valkyries sitting there and no Muters currently out, you don't really have that option. Yeah, Zerg is getting a Defiler mount and it looks like they're just switching into Hydra Lurk or just Lurkers even. Yeah, Hydra Lurk. I think Lurk Hydra Lurk, Lurk. yeah. There's Hydra speed on the way, so it seems like he wants to use the Hydras for more than just morphing Larkas. But we'll see if he can even hold on to this base for long enough. Yeah, these Lurkers are buying time on the high ground. It's definitely annoying to try to push up here with Siege Tanks as Terran, uh, but they are abusing their range and taking out these Lurkers one by one. And now they're actually able to siege down this hatchery with the Barracks and Valkyries providing vision. Uh, the Phylus, uh hurrying over to that third base to try to keep this base alive. Zerg really needs to hold on to this hatchery here and Scourge also on the way. So he may be able to get a good pick off on these Valks. Actually, the Marines are there to protect, yeah. protect against the Scourge, and uh, we have to remember that that um, Terran has now on four bases. The SCPs are just transferring to the third, uh, the three o'clock position, which was his fourth. The bottom right is already mining quite healthily, mm -hmm. so economically, Jinjin is looking really good, and of course, all of these tanks, um, they are pretty strong. Yeah, this position for Terran looks actually phenomenal right now. They've double expanded behind this little aggression they put on at 12 o'clock. They didn't really need to take out this hatchery. They were so far ahead already, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, they just need to maintain map control and defend this bottom right expansion, which now Zurich has a group of uh, Hydralists with their upgrades and it looks like speed overlords. So they are going to be able to take back some of that map control against mines. And right now the Terran army you know, they do have five tanks out on the map, uh, but they don't have like a, a, you know, totally insurmountable tank count. So Zerg's going to try to get out on the map and maybe do a counterattack on one of these new expansions that Terran was able to take. Uh, but Terran now just walking their tanks across the map and actually going to be able to siege up at the Zerg Nat and potentially take out some of these Sunkins. Uh, the Lurkers are going to need to get on top of this third base location for uh, Terran. Yeah, counter attack at 3 o'clock. Seems to manage to force the C to lift and probably be able to get it before it flies away. Yeah, yeah that's so nice. That was a good pickup for Zerg, denying that base was definitely uh, a must. But now we see these tanks are have sieged their way over to the Zerg mat and they're taking out the Sunkins over there as well. So Zerg's forced back and back and they only have uh, Hydras to deal with this right now. They're going to need at least some Dark Swarms or something here. There's a Dark Swarm going down. Oh, a nice I flank. And they get yeah. right on top of these tanks. And this is the struggle of moving out with only like six and seven tanks. Uh, you really do get shut down by Dark Swarm. 
Yeah, w when the lurkers managed to burrow, I, I was really surprised that the defilers got in range to cast on top of the tanks, and the lurkers got got there too. So um, I think maybe the tanks were focused firing on the sunkens or something, but. Uh, yeah, definitely unexpected that that worked so well. But of course, great for the game because now it doesn't end. <laughs> yes. Uh, so good play from uh, Surabi to stay alive there. And a, a, yeah, a really nice engage for Zerg. Kind of a miracle engage actually to uh, prolong this game. But it remains to be seen if Surabi knows about this bottom right base, which uh, may kind of influence the game in Terran's favor. Uh, as Terran is on even basis with Zerg, which is definitely where Terran wants to be considering they've switched over to mech and they're getting their upgrades. Yeah, it looks pretty good still for Jin Jin, even though he, he lost his, his uh, attack there quite convincingly. I think the main issue is that, that uh, Zerg is not really mining very well. His base saturation is super good anywhere. Every base has a bit below um, saturation and it's only three bases which his opponent also has so so that's also at least one too little. Yeah now we're seeing a, a more sizable tank count here in the middle engaging with these hydras and lurkers and they're actually able to clean up this zerg army uh, fairly easily. There is one burrow lurker but it does get taken out. Oh, there's actually another one under this Dark Swarm. Yeah, that's basically the only thing that Sarabi has going for him is Dark Swarm <laughs> with the Burrowed Lurker. Yeah. Because that's the point where you can ignore the tank once you manage that. Yeah, this is kind of the conundrum for Zerg. Uh, it's hard to engage the Terran army without that Dark Swarm, and so it's hard to be aggressive against Terran, because you are forced to use that Dark Swarm so defensively. Uh, now the Science Vessel is out for Terran as well, so they will be able to counter uh, these Defilers a little bit better, and it looks like this third base for Zerg is not long for this world, as the Siege Tanks are sieging it up from the low ground. Uh, and meanwhile, Jinjin, with this super well defended bottom right, placing uh, siege tanks and factories on top of their uh, production here. Yeah, I feel like um, Zerg would want quite a healthy number of circlings to mix in with his army so that he can clear mines and get on top of the tanks, um, get his defilers in range to cast good dark swarms. Um, but the production for that just isn't there, so we only see Hydras and uh, Unlockers. Yeah, Jinjin has totally shut down this top uh, side of the map, and so now they just kind of have to keep drawing out their defensive line. But it looks like they're maybe just trying to end the game here, as they see there's pretty much no defenses in the Zerg net. Zerg only has a few units aiming for maybe a counterattack. As they definitely cannot engage this number of tanks. Yeah, there's a big game called. Yeah. At this point it was three bases against five and the third wasn't even mining yet for Zerg, so definitely the game was over at that point. Um, I feel like the way Jinjin played, maybe there would have been some weakness to exploit in the earlier games, like skipping that stim and range for so long and and all these tech things that he played at once, like Valkyries and Vultures and Mines and all of these things, it feels like Zerg should find a weak point in in all of that tech madness. Yeah, I agree. It was uh, kind of a, a more technical opening for Terran. It seemed like they didn't have a lot of units, but they had a lot of variety, and they were able to trade effectively with that first bio and Valkyrie group taking out that third base, and that set them up for a commanding position. Uh, so. Yeah, it feels a little bit like the 1-1-1, so very technical, um, a little bit flimsy, and yeah, if it gets rolling, then very powerful. In the top left of Polaris Rhapsody, down 0-1, we have 
the green Zerg Saurabi. Yeah, and over here in the bottom right, as the red Darren, we have uh, Jin Jin. It looks like we don't have a, a five pool or similar going uh, to start things off, so I'll quickly dash to the water fountain and fill up my, my water. One second. Yeah, if you need to take a pause, let me know. Sorry about that. Uh, but it looks like it is the Jinjin Jin over here in the bottom right, playing us quit stress game, trying to uh, trying to take this second game and end this series uh, at two games. They were able to win their first game. And actually, it's up to Sorabi to try to even up the tier zero and take a win for um, Beach Buddies of StarCraft. And I'm back. So, so Sorabi is um, is also for, from the Beach Buddies. Yeah, let me make sure, but I'm pretty sure Sorabi is from the European team, which I think is Beach Buddies, and flying SCPs yeah. is changing. I checked it. Sorabi is from the Beach Buddies. So it looks like the flying SCVs, at least in the games we've seen so far, so far are really coming out swinging, leading 2-0 in the Tier 1 games we saw, and also um, this series already a 1-0 lead for, for the flying SCVs. Yeah, so definitely the flying SCVs Tier 0 looking pretty strong right now. Uh, Surabi, it looks like, has opted for an earlier pull this game. Maybe trying to throw Jinjin off or upset the uh, timing of that last build which seemed pretty uh, crisp from Terran so maybe gonna force Terran to build invest more in some early marines and, and not just get their expansion so freely yeah it seems like a good idea this is an over pool build um, which I don't like particularly against Zerg maybe I would have preferred a, a 9 pool a little bit even stronger aggression uh, when you want to go with that. But I think it's a good idea against these kinds of builds that are super um, focused on technology um, and that don't build a lot of units early on to just put some pressure and, and force some, some honesty. Mm -hmm. And we do see the links heading across the map over to Jinjin's base. He has constructed a bunker already and placed some SCVs here to kind of help a uh, wall off these lanes and prevent them from getting up into the main. We'll see how Sarabi decides to play this. Seeing the bunker, he may just back off, but actually, uh, yeah, pushing in for a little bit, taking some shots, and now deciding to retreat with their lanes intact. Also, we see Sarabi place down the third hatchery before he took his gas, so um, he's actually playing a three hatch build, which Jinjin doesn't know because he lost his uh, scouting SCV in the top left corner to the to that ling that, that's running in the middle of the map. If you check it, it has mm -hmm. one, one kill. So um, so Jinjin doesn't know that this is a, um, a pretty unusual build, outdated build, uh, three hatch. Let's see if he just plays similarly to last game or if he can adapt. So Surabi sending in some lanes, picking off that uh, command center building SCB, but it is replaced almost instantly by Jinjin. And as you said, the denying of scouting could be huge here, as uh, we see actually a two uh, two Rax Academy build uh, coming out from the Terran player, uh, most likely due to that lack of scouting, not feeling as comfortable just going straight for Valkyries because they need some kind of scan, I would say now to. Make sure they know exactly what the Zerg is doing. Yeah, this uh, two barracks academy build uh, I often see against against two hatch play to try and force the, the Zerg to build a sunken before the muters are out. Because if Terran manages to pressure Zerg before he can build any muters, the Zerg doesn't have anything so he really needs to build a sunk then and that makes the whole game much harder for Zerg. Um, in this case Saurabi is going for a three hatch play so he has a lot more leeway considering building some 
some Sunkens or some Zerglings and um, his Judas will be a little bit later anyhow so he's probably expecting to have to build a Sunken or, or a couple of links. So I don't think that this build has the intended effect um, yeah, that I actually, think Jinjin is aiming mean, for. Yeah, Sarabi is actually going for some lurkers right now, so this might be a total kind of uh, surprise to Jinjin now, as just now the scan's going on. Let's see, where did he scan? Not able to see that third hatch or the Zerg tech actually with those scans, I'm fairly certain. So Jinjin's still heading across the map with his group of Marine Medic. Seeing no sunken at the net has most likely made them confident enough to try to push in here with this group of uh, Marine Medic with stem upgrade. Zerg going yeah, for just finished. Yeah, I'm gonna clean this up right now, it looks like. We'll see how good the Marine Micro is. Uh, but with these Hydras here doing some DPS, uh, they should be able to... Oh wow, these Fire Bats are so good. <laughs> Sick work from the Fire Bat. Oh, get him! One shot. <laughs> oh, he doesn't. The Medic heals him up. Yeah, the Medics with, with Stim are definitely a force to be reckoned with at this point in the game. Yeah. Hydras with no upgrades don't do well at all. The cyclings just weren't enough, barely. Yeah, some good shots from those uh, fire bats. And now the medics kind of leaving their uh, marines to die here, it looks like. Uh, so Jinjin actually did a good attack there uh, when I didn't think there really was a timing. Uh, but seeing no sunken's able to uh, do some damage to Zerg, but Zerg actually didn't lose very many drones, ultimately. They were very quick to pull drones. They did kind of trade armies here, but I think Zerg is able to replenish their army a little bit faster as we do see a bunch of lurkers morphing in. And now Jinjin forced to build uh, three bunkers as well as a missile turret at their gnat to try to defend against any kind of lurker counterattack that we may see here. Uh, getting their upgrades, getting their factory as well, so they, they know they need to tech to counter these uh, lurkers. Yeah, so in the Terran shoes, uh, if you identify that you are going against lurkers, then space is a, a premium, because um, once, once you're bunched up, lurkers do a lot of damage, so these forward bunkers are mainly to, to uh, take some space. If, if a bunker is focused down, you unload it and go back a bit. Here we see the attack coming in. Uh, not a lot of Marines yet. Yeah, able to take out that uh, first missile turret, but so far no bunkers have gone down. And it looks like Zerg's kind of just going to be able to contain here. I don't think they're going to be able to break this many uh, bunkers. Yeah. But contain should be fine. There's already a hive tech going, and uh, Sarabi has. has these uh, three hatches, so you can drone up really, really quick. Maybe take a third base uh, now that he has a contain going up. Um, we'll see what what he plans. This hive is really fast. It might be a rush into defilers because um, when you have Terran contained like this, then the only ingredient missing is a dark swarm, <laughs> and you can basically run all those lurkers into the natural, and it's it's game over if if they are protected by the swarm. So um, that might be the strategy to get a really fast dark swarm. Try to keep the contain up until the defiler can come. Yeah, I like how you mentioned that the kind of missing ingredient here is dark swarm. Once that happens, Zerg will be at their essentially their win condition if you get dark swarm in the Zerg in the Terran net. Uh, but Terran teching up. Getting tanks now with Siege, so they will be able to start doing some damage to these Lurkers before the Defiler gets here. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, a matter of, is Zerg able to hold on to this expand long enough? Uh, or, or will they come back? It looks like they're going for it. They've added on a bunch of lanes, and they're getting on top of this first tank. Oh, and the first tank gets taken out, and it looks like this bunker will fall as well. Uh, Terran is able to just retreat back to their second line of fortification here. They're gonna need to scan, maybe? Looks like they're yes, being... and the, the second tank is just now started. It seems that Jinjin somehow forgot about building that. 
Um, tanks are of course a great way to, to um, put some pressure on, on lurkers that are containing you. Uh, so tanks with siege definitely what you want to go for against lurkers. Uh, I don't think that Jin intentionally. Um, I think he forgot to build that tank. He's killing himself for it right now. Yeah, Jinjin trading away a lot of bio there and losing them for the Lurkers. And as you said, the tanks are really what trade effectively with the Lurkers, not the Marine Medic, or it's very difficult to trade effectively with Marine Medic. Now Jinjin uh, unloading their bunkers, maybe looking to try to get some more map control as they must have been able to see here that Zerg is going for Hive and they need to get out on the map before the Defiler gets there or that it will just be a good game. Here is the second tank out for Terran and they're forcing back Zerg so far. Uh, but this narrow bridge looks like certain death if Terran does try to move across it. Yeah, Consume is just about to be done and there's five Lurkers here and a, and a group of links. So Sarabi just uh, is playing the run around the rosy mm -hmm. game. And once his Defiler can consume two links, he might be able to just borrow those Lurkers great position. Great and invincible. Yeah, one science vessel is out, uh, and here comes Terran going for a bit of a uh, an attack here, but not really scouting this Zerg counter, and now Terran has to react instantly to this, filling a bunker, uh, but these lurkers are getting burrowed, and there's the Dark Swarm up, uh, so what's Terran gonna do? They it looks like they're going for a counterattack here on the minimap, trying to push into the top uh, left. The Dark Swarm casted the time, so the counter is also going to be held. There's only one Lurker, but one Lurker and a Dark Swarm is enough, uh, <laughs> I think. Yeah, it's kind of unfair, but it's true. A Lurker under Dark Swarm at this time in the game here for uh, Zerg is just so strong. It makes these positions kind of, you know, unassailable. And now the Lurker's actually getting a little ahead of themselves, maybe trying to force it into the main here of the uh, of the Terran. But definitely this one Lurker under Dark Swarm with 12 kills in the Zerg mat, able to totally destroy that uh, Terran, I guess, counter-attack. So this base trade scenario for uh, Terran did not work at all, as they uh, went for a counter-attack but got denied. And now they do have a one Vessel out uh, casting Irradiate. But that's not going to clean up these Lurkers at all fast enough. As there are Lurkers now on top of the Terran production. Yeah, it looks like um, Zerg has managed to get in a, in a position where he is on the production now. And the natural has been denied, so it's a matter of whenever Jinjin Jin wants to tap out of the game. And hopefully um, we can see a nice third game. Uh, which will decide the series. Yeah, there is a tank out now for Terran and some fire bats being built, uh, a, sign, a couple science vessels as well, so... Uh, uh, but it looks like once this tank falls, it may be a good game here because uh, Terran running out of units here to defend their production and the Lurkers are just getting closer and closer to the uh, Terran mineral line, actually. Uh, that being said, Terran didn't trade too badly there, taking out a few of the Lurkers, but uh, here's the last tank it looks like. Must be said, this was very aggressive from Saurabi. He, he never got a, a third gas. He was down on 22 drones um, towards the end of this game, so yeah, um, kudos to him to, to getting it done. But uh, had Jinjin held that somehow, mm -hmm. he would have been in a very bad position. Also, I, I think it was a it's a hard decision to make to do, to do that counter attack. But um, I think it was a good decision. I have lost quite a few games like that, where I looked at the replay afterwards and and um, and saw that I I could have cast Dark Swan there, but I just I wasn't fast enough. Mm -hmm. The Terran stilled in, and there was only this one, the one lurker and one defiler, and they they saved the day in this case. But if you kill either of those before the dark swarm is out, um, then there's nothing there stopping the Terran army, and then it's a then it's an easy win from from that point because your army is unstoppable and Zerg doesn't have anything except mm -hmm. uh, his main net. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. That was a clutch Dark Swarm from Zerg to defend that net and essentially save the game there, as it would have been a lot more difficult for them if the Terran was able to take out those units and get into the Zerg main, because as you were mentioning, Zerg had no third base. They had really nothing else for the later game. Yeah. Um, and um, he was microing at his attack, so it's impressive to be able to, to get the Dark Swarm in the defense and also at the same time the Dark Swarms on the offense, right? Because it was that, that happened at the same time. So, yeah. Well done by Saurabi. Um, here we see the, the third map for the first time, I think. Um, in the bottom left, we have in yellow the Zerg player Saurabi. Yeah, and in the top left, we have our Red Terran, uh, Jin Jin. And they are kind of discussing that last game, which was pretty exciting. And Jin Jin, a little upset about that uh, path, I guess, that was used to counterattack, uh, because that was kind of game deciding there. Uh, but we're seeing both players talk about how well they know the maps. And this map is definitely a lot more uh, standard. I think both players are, they're not going to have any kind of excuses about this map because it is uh, so common in the map pool, uh, being polypoid. Yes, yes definitely. Polypoid is the, I think, the most played standard map right now. Um, somehow replaced Fighting Spirit as the most played standard map. And um, it's pretty similar. Um, I probably don't need to say anything about it as everybody watching played countless games Polyport. Yeah, it's interesting they chose both Polyport and Fighting Spirit as those are, uh, like you said, very similar maps as well for this week. So again, with four player maps and with uh, uh, the abilities of Terran to kind of zone out the map with mines, we may see another mech switch uh, from Jinjin as that can be effective on this kind of a map. But getting into this game, we see Sarabi taking that expansion, so not going for an early pool here. And we see Jinjin uh, with the standard Rax timing and initially get, sending their scout and not finding the Zerg base. So they may opt to double scout here just to be on top of any kind of early Zergling aggression that may come out of Zerg. Um, and they are going to see most likely this Overlord. We'll see. Oh, it doesn't look like they saw it, uh, but Get eventually, yeah. Yeah, the build Sarabi is playing is the same that he did in game one, that he didn't manage to win, so hopefully uh, that's not a bad omen, but he went for the 12 hatch and then uh, pool and gas, so it's, it's uh, two hatch rebuild, and also uh, not so fast links build. <laughs> In the second game, he played the overpool and put some pressure on with his links. Yeah, so this way may be a, a omen for a more uh, standard game. Is this the right version of Polly? I certainly hope so. Ladder one. OPKL. <laughs> Uh, but the first links are on the map now, and they're going to try to trace away this uh, scouting SCB for Terran. And we also see the lair is about halfway done, so most likely this could be another two hatch mutilisk, uh, more standard play from Zerg. We also see again the pretty fast gas by Jinjin, Jin, um, but this time he's going for the engineering bay. Then we'll see if he again goes into something like Valkyrie. So far it's looking pretty similar to game one. And I hope that Saurabi has some kind of a deviation from, from what happened in game one planned because that didn't go well in the end. Um, Saurabi actually could get something done with these first Zerglings as there is only two Marines and no bunker quite yet. Uh, so maybe sensing that, heading back in here, Trying to get on top of these Marines, there is a little bit of a Sim City from Zerg, I mean from Terran, but Zerg could definitely get on top of uh, those Marines. Yeah. 
And here is the bunker uh, finishing up. So it looks like this aggression or this kind of poke in here from Zerg has been thwarted. And now we see a, a spire on the way for Zerg. Uh, so far, it looks very much like like our game one. Well, also mm -hmm. uh, for for anyone that that um, maybe doesn't know uh, Jinjin yet, uh, look at um, Google it or enter it in YouTube. Uh, he has quite a lot of translated videos of uh, Korean content and there's really good stuff for all of the races. So he has um, pro gamers uh, commentating on how to play um, in, for all races. And that's what, what was interesting for me. So there's Zerg uh, guides, Terran guides and Protoss guides translated from the pros themselves. Uh, really, really useful and I think um, uh, it's extremely valuable for, for us foreigners to get to get some first-hand Korean knowledge in, into the scene. So definitely check out Tinjin on, on YouTube if you if you don't know him or haven't uh, haven't done so yet. Yeah, I, I totally second that. And anyone who hasn't checked it out, yeah, go ahead and take a look at those. Add some game knowledge. Um, but it looks like. Jinjin not going for Valkyries this game, going for Forex Tech, so looking to add in some uh, Marine upgrades, getting their plus one as well as range right now, and just defend these Mutalists with the Bio and Missile turrets, not needing Valks uh, for this game. And we see uh, Sarabi getting plus one attack on their Mutas and getting a third base. So Sarabi gonna poke in with the first Mutalist to try to get some damage done. Uh, see that there is missile turrets out. Yeah, I'm, it's a little bit confusing to me uh, that Jinjin decided to switch up his game one strategy as that went so well. And I think it's a pretty hard strategy to adapt to on the fly. There's no obvious thing that you can change. Um, I think again, this Valkyrie strategy re requires quite some, quite some different mindset, and it's hard to adapt to it on the fly. So if I was Jinjin, I wouldn't mix it up. I would try it again. But uh, he decides to go for something else, which I think is is nice because we see um, how well how well Jinjin can play this style, and and how well Sorabi can can play against a more standard. Um, Terran play uh, with his two hatchery mutalist. Yeah, I'm not sure why Jinjin switched it up. Maybe uh, seeing that three hatch lurker play in game two kind of uh, made them a little uncomfortable to go for that build again. Uh, but still, uh, here's the factory coming down for Jinjin, and they are going to try to hold on. Uh, and put some pressure on the Zerg actually as the Zerg is microing against these Marine Medic. There is a Hydralisk Den for Sarabi. Um, I wanted to say, but he hasn't started Lurker Aspect yet. At that moment, he started Lurker Aspect. So I guess he's not all inning on Mutalisks, which was my initial thought, given that the Lurker Aspect hadn't started for so long. Um, now he just has a relatively late Lurker Aspect and a relatively large amount of Mutalisks, which it's hard to micro uh, more than one control group, so... Um, yeah, we'll see how he does with this attack. He only has one Sunken. We, we need to see some yeah. delay tactics or uh, Muta magic. This is looking real bad for Zerg, actually, considering how much Marine Medic there is that's moved across the map and only seeing one Sunken. This is going to have to be some really nice control on these Mutalisks to whittle down this marine medic force before it gets on. Oh, wow. So we just saw a bunch of mutalists die there to this upgrade marine medic. Yeah, <laughs> that was rough. So um, we would have liked to see a little bit more sanctions there um, from the Zerg perspective. And also you need to be active with your mutas and um, really harry them across the map. Um, try and make them pay for, for, for the distance that they have to travel 
uh, always try and pick the marines that stray behind or in front or to the side. Some always do. But in this case, Tinjin got his whole marine medic ball across the map without taking any damage and there was only one sunken. At that point it was, it was impossible to hold with, with one control group of mutants and uh, no lurkers yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going for that plus one attack on the needle list didn't really work that game. They uh, may have been more favored with uh, faster lurkers. Uh, yeah. I'm ready to start the next series. So I posted it up. It's going to be Advil against Glow. So another Terran versus Zerg, it looks like, between these two teams. So it was again the flying SCVs that take the W. So at least in the, um, the televised matches, if we could call them that, uh, it's a lead of 3 to 0 right now for, for the flying SCVs. Um, and here we see in the top left, um, in the red Zerg, Flow. Yeah, so we have Flow as the red Zerg, and here in the bottom left, we have IRK's Advil as the ground Terran. Yeah, um, I don't know anything about Flow. I'm not sure if I have ever played against him. Uh, but of course, Advil is Team IRK, so he's also on my team and your team, our team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've played a, a few practice games against him, but also not super many. Mm -hmm. I played a few times against him, but yeah, we'll we'll see what what these two players are up for. Yeah, I've played Flow before. I know that I don't think I have seen Advil or even played a game against Advil. So I'm really excited to see how they play uh, this Terran vs. Zerg matchup they've got right now. And so this is going to be on Fighting Spirit, which is or was one of the most common maps, uh, maybe one of the most played maps ever for StarCraft 3 4. So this is going to be a very uh, classic matchup that we're seeing uh, on the old school map. So, uh, so far, uh, pretty standard builds from both players, no one opting for any early cheese just yet. Yeah, it looks like um, Atwill is going for the early gas. So this is the first, maybe a little bit non-standard play, you see. Um, the early gas is something that Zerg actively scouts for with his drone. It's basically the only thing that I care about with my scouting drone. Is there a gas or is there not? And it tells us that Edwin is going for some kind of a, a mech build or or one 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 or for a factory. He's going for a factory. Yeah, definitely. A, we're gonna see a factory here produced uh, from Advil, and so that's gonna give them an opportunity for an early vulture. And also the choice between, yeah, do they want to go for a starport now? Uh, moving all the guys off gas looks like there will be no starport. Most likely this looks like a factory expand build now from uh, Terran. But as we can see, Zerg doesn't really, I don't think Zerg saw the guys taking off gas. So uh, they're kind of in the dark now that they've had to pull their drone back. And so Terran can choose between how they want to follow this up. Yeah. I think he saw like the first one was pulled off gas whilst the drone was still around. So if he was very attentive, um, maybe, but he could have maybe stayed for two more seconds mm -hmm. and, um, and and check that. Uh, of course, Edward could have then just continued mining. So it's a bit of a, a mind game. But if you see that the Terran is pulling um, either two or even all of the workers off gas, then that indicates that he wants to get his command center out right after building the factory and you don't have to worry about fast um, fast starboard, which might be used for, for drop or, or even a raid. Yeah, we do see uh, one Zergling is going to scout this expansion and actually make it into the Terran main. 
but it is met by the first vulture which has been produced and instantly uh, killed there. But there is a Zerg Sunken, so he's going to be able to deny this vulture from getting into his base uh, for the time being. And we also see Zerg has their lair done. So it's up to Zerg. Uh, most likely they're going to add a Spire here. Yeah, it's already added. It looks a little bit like a Sunken, but it's part of the of the Sim City. Yeah, so Zerg uh, going for two hatch. Uh, Terran actually constructing an engineering bay quite quickly here before a second factory. And it looks like Terran has. Well, we'll see. They've they've got an armory and an engineering bay going, so it remains to be seen what they're going to decide to invest in upgrading. Uh, but I would say this game looks like a mech game from uh, Advil so far. Yeah, there is the second factory, and they've lifted off the command center. So now, it, I mean, they're barracks. Yeah, he's going for Goliath to defend the mutalisks, and he also put down the, um, the engineering bay at a maybe a little bit too early time. Here we see a vulture run by, but the, the drones are quick to react, and the block looks good. So um, losing two drones, I think. Yeah, it looks but, like only two. Yeah, nice defense. The SimCity um, that Flo chose is a little bit... Um, it's not ideal, <laughs> yeah. because you would, like to, the, you would like to have put the Spire below, uh, so you can block with the hatch, the sunk and the Spire, make a wall with those three buildings, but because um, the hatch and the Spire are at the top, it's a little bit clunky, the wall off, I guess, but the block went really well, and the the vultures couldn't really go through the top, so they had to go through the through the drones. Yeah, some good defense there from Flo, not losing too much. Unfortunate to lose two drones, but you're going to lose something when they commit their vultures like that, uh, most likely. So now we see the Mutalists out, and they're going to try to get some damage done here. It looks like at the Terran Nat, as there is only one turret here, um, defending one side of the mineral line. And the Zerg's actually being very aggressive with their Mutalists, losing one already and not taking a lot of damage, but they may just try to end the game. They're playing very aggressive here. Yeah. Um, when you come in with these early Mutalists, often Terran doesn't have enough Goliaths up yet and it can be very dicey for, for Terran. So I think um, Flo was sensing some blood in the water there, some chance to, to pounce. Because if you get the first few Goliaths, then it snowballs, and, and mm. uh, Terran really doesn't have have much to defend. But um, Edville was able to to drive the Mutus back, and I think now with the next cycles of Goliaths coming out, um, it will stabilize. Things will look a lot better. Yeah, Flo uh, was very uh, committed there, fighting on top of that turret. Uh, but able to save their mutilist, list, and they still have an advantage. Uh, but I think as these guys get out more and more and they start getting their upgrades, Terran will be able to put some pressure maybe onto the Zerg, as we see Zerg is taking their 12 o'clock expansion. And they're getting an Evo, so maybe going into Hydralis now. Yeah, it looks like they placed a the Hydralis then. Interestingly, we don't see the... Uh Cherry and missiles, I think it's called uh, the upgrade for Goliaths. Um, that must be an oversight by Edwell because you, if you're going for Goliaths against Mutalisks, you definitely want the range upgrade. Yeah, it hasn't been upgraded yet. Uh, as, far, as far as I know, it hasn't. The shots didn't look like they had oh. the, the upgrade. Yeah, that could come in uh, crucial here, uh, the lack of that upgrade. Here we see the Mutas going for a counterattack into the main as the as the Goliaths were a little out of position. Sneaking down here at the bottom of the map where there is no missile turrets to defend really. And getting quite a few SCBs here. Okay, I stand corrected that it looks like the upgraded attack. The, the visual difference. Um, I can't really I don't really know what it is, but it looks like the upgraded attack. Yeah, it's definitely the upgraded attack here as we're seeing this nice uh, Goliath range being used. 
uh, to force those mutilists back. And those mutilists actually taking quite a bit of damage. They did, however, kill a lot of SCVs, making Zuri actually ahead now in the worker count. So I think it's on Terran now to maybe push out with a counterattack. Uh, they definitely uh, did not want to lose so much SCVs there to those uh, mutilists. As has kind of allowed Zerk to gain uh, eco advantage now. Yeah, the timing also was perfect because the Goliaths were just considering to move out, so the they had to travel all the way back. Um, that that delayed their ability to defend. Now Advil has has considered to stay more defensive, which shouldn't take so much damage this time. Uh, yeah, uh, it looks like Flo being very aggressive with these Mutalists, trading in even again here, losing three Mutalists, but taking out a few SCVs again. And so, uh, yeah, what's Advil going to do now? They've they've got these uh, two command centers worth of SCVs, they've got to replenish their mineral line, but they also must feel like they have to do some damage to Zerg here, as they are moving out, and it looks like they're going to take out this scan and overlord. Yeah, Flo has already switched fully into Hydralisk production. He's uh, getting the range upgrade, but speed is already done. Also, the plus one um, attacks is uh, range attacks is almost done. So the Hydras already are looking quite good. Yeah, these are some upgraded Goliath with plus one about to finish on the weapons too for Terran. But this is a good number of Hydra here, and they are pretty strong against just Goliath. But losing the Mulus now. Yeah, there's not a single tank. Um, I don't know if even Siege Mode uh, is, is researched yet. So you really want to mix in some tanks against the Hydras. Yeah, seeing these Hydras now, a tank is in production. I think Terran had no way of really scouting these, this Hydra switch, and it has caught them a little off guard. And now here come the Hydras coming across the map into the Terran net. There's actually a lot of Hydras here, and they're right on top of these Goliaths, and the Goliaths being picked off one by one. This looks like enough Zerg to break in. Yeah, there's just too many Hydras, and also the, the Goliaths weren't in a very good position. Let's see if the tank can save the day. It's, it's getting closer and closer with these SCVs really doing good blocking and also damage. Yeah, Terran has hung on here. They did lose their entire Goliath army though, which is going to be needed to defend against this Hydra force, which is kind of swarming across the map. And now the tank goes down. There wasn't... Uh, the SCVs went back to mining for a second there. But there's nothing. Yeah. Wow, catching Advil um, with his pants down there, he, he really should have anticipated the Hydras better and, and gotten a tank in time. Also, I feel like Hydra against Goliath has a lot to do with positioning. Like, uh, if you get a good arc on, on the opponent, then that makes a, a huge difference. And the Goliaths just were kind of in a line in the net, easy to attack by the Hydras if they were a little bit more up at the bridge, you could have put them in a nice arc so the Hydras can't really cross the bridge and get a good um, arc in return. Mm -hmm. So that, that would have been the, the play positionally and then you would have been able to hold that much better, I think. Yeah, I, th I think for Advil getting the, uh, losing so much SCVs at the beginning there, um, when their glass were a little bit out on the map and they got counterattacked, that was unfortunate and that, that may have prevented them from getting the, the necessary tech they needed to hold off against that Hydra uh, counterattack. Or that Hydra uh, somewhat all-in we saw from Zerg. Actually, I don't even think that was an all-in. I think that was just a normal Hydra timing from Zerg. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a switch, a tech switch and when you're playing mech, then that's one of the powerful moves that, that uh, Zerg has, switching back and forth between Hydra and Muta uh, production. You, you always need to balance your Goliaths and your tanks to, to match. And Advil just, just didn't. He wasn't able to 
to balance that, he only had Goliaths. Yeah, some nice play from Close, showing a good understanding of uh, yeah how to counter the mech play by uh, going for some Mutas first and then able to switch into Hydras when necessary. We'll see if Advil goes for the same kind of opening on a Polaris here for our game two. Yeah, and also maybe of note is um, Flo is one of the flying SCV members. So, so far, flying SCV has won all of the series we've casted. They're up 3 0 in our casted series, and this one also looks to be in their favor so far. So, rooting for, for Advil here to, to pull it back and get one on the board for, for the beach bodies. <laughs> Yeah, we are in game two, so Advil needs to even it up. And uh, Advil placing their racks so far next to the gas, it looks like they will uh, go for another early gas. We'll see. Uh, but Zerk taking that early expansion. And yeah, there it goes. Advil taking a 12 gas. So again, maybe a factory expand or potentially a 111 or a Wraith play. So that Zerg is sending out their first drone to check this Terran gas timing and kind of get a better idea of what Zerg or what they have to do to counter what Terran is doing. Yeah, I think maybe Atril is thinking if only I defend the initial muters where he really lost quite a lot of SCVs. Um, if only I defend those initial muters uh, better, then the, the whole game will look different mm -hmm. and, um, and the, Goli the Goliath army will be much stronger and not so easily uh, toppled by a few Hydralisks. So maybe that, maybe he just wants to play it a little bit better, the same, same strategy, but better. Yeah, maybe the same build, a little bit different uh, unit placement, maybe to protect a, that mineral line from the mutalists at that uh, early timing in the game. Here is a factory being produced. So it looks like Advil going for the same build, taking guys off gas, most likely looking to expand here uh, relatively soon. And that will allow them to play into the later game uh, and choose how they want to uh, follow up here. Yeah, from Flow we see like last game uh, the typical 12 hatch into, into a 2 hatch play. The layer being half done, we're expecting to see very similar to last game a uh, Spire built. Let's see how his SimCity will be on this map. He, he wants to block that, that Vulture run by the potential of a run, run by. If you remember last game, that was also part of his success that he was able to block those three mm -hmm. vultures with his drones. No use only two drones to the, to the three vultures. Yeah, hopefully this Zerg SimCity is on par. This is a little bit more of an exposed natural, I think. Uh, but here, Zerg going for that Spire as part of their wall again. So definitely aware of the potential for a Vulture run by and even opting to place their Spire in a somewhat exposed position in order to protect their uh, resource lines. And here is a second factory going down as well as an armory. So definitely uh, Mech and Goliaths will most likely see to try to counter this Zerg Mutilus. And the first vulture actually goes in there, it takes two shots and now dies, so very unfortunate. I think that wasn't intentional from Advil because his vulture jerked, so I think he wasn't intentionally sending it in like that. But if he if he just had continued straight, he would have gotten it behind the mineral line and it would have been a, a headache for, for Zerg. Yeah, maybe a moment of indecision or a little bit of miscontrol there. But uh, definitely losing that first Vulture uh, sets Terran back a little bit as Zerg is going to be able to most likely take a third base here if they wanted to. 
Uh, but Toad didn't really even need to do that last game, so maybe they're gonna stay safe and just uh, stick on their uh, two base resource mining for now. Yeah, as they have, they have placed a hatch at their net. Yeah. So basically, the path into the main is is pretty well um, obscured by these buildings, but the right side where the single vulture also had a really had a good shot is is pretty open and, and if you get the vultures behind the mineral line how are you going to clear them um i guess with the with the mutas you can but um, mm -hmm. yeah i think it's a missed opportunity there uh, for advil so flow that <laughs> flow was looking to take an expansion here in the top right which is a i think a double gas expansion so zerg rushing for that uh kind of a wise move but good play from Advil, able to pick up that first drone. They are going to lose their Vulture now, and a second drone comes out for Flow, so they're just going to take the expansion slightly more delayed. Uh, and they know they have map control with these uh, Mutas. So Terran now on the back foot has to place up some Missile Turrets uh, and, and spam out those Goliaths with, with the range upgrade. Yeah, the double gas base, interestingly, has... Um has the double gas, but it only has 2,500 gas in each of those. Oh. So um, the base itself has the same amount of gas while these muters are actually being hammered from both sides. I'm not sure if it's worth a run. Yeah, some uh, good defense there. Uh, still though, able to take out a few SCVs, losing a couple mutalists, but I like the uh, turret placement from Advil there. and. Able to at least uh, do some more damage to these mules as they were picking off the SCVs this game. So, uh, if Advil is able to scout this third base, they may be able to punish it before Sunkins get up there. Uh, but right now, they're just wow, they're adding on a bunch more missile turrets, so it looks like they're gonna turtle. Um, it doesn't, they don't have a third factory yet. So this looks like a more defensive play from Terran, as it looks like they're they're just sick of losing SCVs and they want to get a, a more uh, stable hold on the game and maybe do a, a later timing attack. Which might be a good read because Flo is really really aggressive with his mutas, uh, almost tunnel visioning on those SCVs, and seems to uh, I don't know enjoy investing for a couple of SCVs. Yeah, so maybe the trick is some, some more defensive structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good adjustment here from Advil as he was able to repel those mutalists, taking relatively few losses on the worker line uh, to that last attack. Uh, but behind this flow has able to take their third gas and they're, so they're, they're going to get more and more uh, mutalist production. And they've upgraded the mutalisk as well. So it looks like this game it might be just straight mutalisk from Zer. Yeah. Especially because now the armor upgrade is also following. Mm -hmm. uh, last game he, he went for the, the plus one attack like this game first. Which is a little bit unusual against against mech. Usually the armor is preferred. But um, He's doing the same as he did last game, except now he's getting the armor as well, so a more mutilist focused play, it seems. Yeah, we are seeing a preference for mutilist in this game. Uh, here is a vulture actually making its way to that double gas expo, and there's kind of no defenses here at all for Zerg, so that vulture could be very effective. Here we see Zerg has done a counterattack into the main with the Mutalisks, actually taking quite a few hits, but forcing a, a SCV pull. And now those Mutalisks are going to be forced to retreat and maybe deal with this Vulture up here in the top right, which uh, has picked off a few drones. Oh! And damaging a few other drones. Yeah, there was quite some more potential there, but I guess he was distracted by the mutalisks. He got three drones, but then he wasted a few hits on the hatch where he could have been uh, 
um, at least denying mining, probably even killing more drones. Okay. Yeah, so a little bit of a pity there that he couldn't, he wasn't able to control that. Yeah, we see Flo has uh, totally stuck on Mutalist and is uh, massing up, you know, a big flock of Mutas now. And to counter this, Advil is just going for pure Goliath, it looks like right now, with also some vultures kind of running around to try to limit the uh, Zerg expansions. Uh, and plus one is about to finish on the vehicle weapons for Terrence, so this may be their cue to move out as it looks like there is no starport to uh, further upgrade their mech, so this could be their timing. Uh, so we'll see how Flo decides to deal with this. They have enough mutas that they could consider fighting this Goliath force head on, but judging by their positioning, it looks like they're just going to counter the main as soon as they see these Goliaths move out. And here is an attack into the main, flying past actually the turrets and trying to get onto this main resource line, and actually focusing down that armory, which is Kind of an interesting choice, but now there will be no more uh, Goliath production. So all they have to do is trade effectively with the Goliaths that are out right now. Advil actually lifting off their main command center and trying to float it away, but it can make it focus down here as the Goliaths are streaming in to try to defend this uh, command center. Wow, is Flo really going to focus down this command center in the main? It looks like it. Uh, it's getting repaired, but not quick enough. Uh, ballsy play there, taking out the, uh, <laughs> the main command center and armory with Mutos and then just dipping. So, uh, yeah, what is Terran to do here? They've constructed a second armory. They really... I mean, I guess they're going to expand to their main again, but uh, they really have to get a damage done, I think, with this Goliath force, considering they did trade with so many Mutalists. Yeah, definitely. The Muta army was reduced quite a lot there and uh, the damage was only economical and I guess function if you consider that the Goliath could be built after the armory died. So hopefully Advil can do something now that it puts similar pain on, on flow. Yeah, Advil kind are a lot of, of mutas. Moving across the map, a little spread out with the Goliaths for the time being. They're going to look to group up and maybe push into the uh, net where there is that exposed uh, spire with a, a halfway finished plus two armor for the Mutalist. Um, so it will most likely come down to this one big fight here. Has Flo had enough time to you know, regroup and build Mutas, or is this uh, Goliath Force going to get on and uh, use their superior upgrades? But it looks like the Mutas are getting right on top of this Goliath here, and the Goliaths are, you know, evaporating. Yeah, this is so many mutas. Entity's fault. There we have it. 4-0 for the flying SCDs. As nobody told them that it's forbidden to, to use the flying SCD. They're winning all the games. Yeah, definitely some nice play uh, in today's matches. Uh, so we have the flying SCDs taking it 4-0. For tier zero from week one, so well played games from all of them, and uh, yeah, that's it for our cast. Thank you all for watching, and hopefully you guys are you know involved in CPL or at least interested in playing. There's definitely a Discord server you guys are all able to join, and thank you all for watching today. Yeah, thank you. See you next time. <laughs>